So you started with the image, right? So you've yeah. got this image. Yeah. That's what we're all, like, I remember being a young student and being told, well, the sky is supposed to be blue, Katerina. And, you know, so people, as young people, were always directed towards an image. But then you get to college and your horizons open up, right? And you're taught, you know, I'm assuming at the time it was probably um, <coughs> philosophically Derrida and, and all of these modern philosophers were on very current at the time. So perhaps, I don't know because I didn't go to art school, um, but I'm assuming that part of the curriculum was talking about the oh, actual so. thing of painting. And, well, and the paint, right? So well, you did that, which blew my mind when I heard about it or found out about it. Yeah, so, no, I mean, basically, I entered, when I entered college, I was, I mean, I think if, if, if you're an artist and you start as a child, you're gonna be a developer or one that rep makes representation work. And then for me, my experience with people that became art majors in college, they were abstractions because, you know, you, you sort of, where you, in, it's kind of like music, but music, you, first recognizes your music. And so drawing or storytelling or narrative things were always my art. And but the conceptual aspect, which I in my freshman year, David Hockney was a drawing instructor. Uh, Barbara Rose was an uh, art historian. I mean, I had these incredible instructors, which I had no, you know, Frank Stella was going to be teaching there. There was all these really modernist people. And I that was completely another planet. But if you're gonna be there, you gotta be, you know. So I switched over, and so by switching, I mean, I understood um, the concepts they were trying to, and they were all new, so I'm always interested. If something's something they haven't done, I'm interested in it. So, but the first you took the paint. Okay, but basically it was a, I'll try to think this fast. Um, Barbara Rose was an art instructor, she was married to uh, Frank Stella at the time, and she, uh, we were learning about Jasper Johns, who did the flags and nearly early uh, pop art or images. And it was her contention at that time that they were objects, so they weren't depictions of something, but they'd be, you know, the figure one or a target. It wasn't a real thing, but it was an object. But I was still seeing real things. I mean, because I knew I knew those things before I got to it. So I decided if I was going to hang with this crowd, I needed to make a painting that was an object and not a story. But they would have a story and it would make itself. And so I was trying to, I'm going to put this thing down. I was trying to be, uh, make a painting that just was self descriptive, that you didn't know, have to know anything. So the first one, and I was using non objective, uh, non objective, non art materials. These are all made out of roofing tar. And because, I mean, if anybody that's painting with oil, you're, you're already dead. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, I couldn't understand how you could use oil paint, which that was always a funny thing in New York. New York minimalists like Kelly and stuff, they were still using oil paint, and this is like a whole new thing. Why are we using oil paint? On the West Coast, they're using plastics and automotive lacquers, and, you know, in a sense, they're updating the materials with the concept. It's not like, you know, you've got this anchor of an oil paint tube on your leg, and well, I've got to bring oil paint along, you know, that, it's not a painting. So, I just ditched all that stuff. And so the first painting was this, um, it's called Rope Painting, and it's just basically, it looks like a package, but I, I didn't want it like a Christo, that it, you can try to guess what's underneath it. I wanted it neutral, I basically I wanted, to, I wanted it to look like a window that had been closed, and the rope uh, defined the side, and it was just this thing. I mean, you knew what it was, but it wasn't, you didn't have to know anything before you saw it to know what it was. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I switched, I kept doing them, and then so I would do, um, oh, I'll show this one, I'll just get out there. that's one. And so then basically I got into acrylics, and what this is called Watchman, and it's based on Jasper John's uh, painting of the Night Watchman, which is a sort of a lower section of legs in a chair. And what John said at the time about that painting was that, who, who watches the Watchman watch, which is probably good for our own times. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so what this is, uh, this, this is a, just a little maquette, but the paint has been cut and then peeled back so it overhangs the edge. So much like Frank Stella at the time, I was trying to make a shape painting, but not one that I shaped, but the painting became shaped due to the process that was in, in its making. And then also then, the, as this is flat down, you know, this is just a little over half the distance, so it overhangs, so it brings flat. And then also what you're seeing, the strokes you're seeing here are the first layers of paint. 
And the strokes you're seeing here are the last layers of paint. So you're seeing the back and the front. And the support is not just a support, but it's an integral part of the image. So it's all, that's what I was thinking about. But it's um, about paint. So you're yeah, making... it's about paint. It's painting is about painting. So the object yeah. is the paint. Yeah. And I did that for about 10 years. I got an NEA grant. Um, and I did a show like this with this material. I'm sorry. Don't, don't forget this side of the room. I'm sorry. Well, you guys... Don't <laughs> So it starts with the title, right? Titles are the kickstarters. Yes, that's, absolutely. That's it's where like your title begins. Book. Yeah, that's like a, this was done, the biggest one had done for my 60th birthday, which was a while back. That's the title. Um, and it, it was called Faith and Hope. So there's no sense of irony that we're standing under that one, right? Wow. <laughs> Have I changed much? Um, uh, no, I, maybe, I just really, it's my favorite painting because it's just like every day you've got to just get up and try to rebalance everything. You know that it's not going to be, you're not the new young buck on the clock. And so you just got to. You're an albatross here? No, that's, I've still got that one around, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> it is up there, isn't it? Isn't that the albatross? Oh, those are, oh that was called cabinet. Uh, that was, it's four eggs. It's just basically our. It's okay. basically, it's an eagle egg, an owl egg, a vulture egg, and a loon egg. Oh, okay. All in one cabinet, and it's, uh, I mean, I'm, these are these are trying to be uh, uh, like curiosity cabinets. And, uh, and, I mean, I always feel like we're back in the Enlightenment period, where you know, like people find a megalodon shark's tooth, and they say, "Oh, that's the tongue of a devil." Uh, you know, where there's fake news has been around a while. But I, I just, I just really like these kind of right now. These are just kickbacks. Um, they're like, I mean, I put them on because they're almost like thought bubbles. Uh, they're just little things I've always wanted to paint and I've never done because they, they're not they're not part of a larger idea. They're just kind of one offs. But they relate. But they relate to each other, you know. Well, they're all coming out of the same well. Yeah. No, but I mean the yeah. fate, fate and hope. I mean, well, a lot I, of these know, creatures all, are now dead and gone, right? So. Well, it's a, well, um, it's a lot of death um, over here. Once you pass halfway, you know, you see the end of the tunnel, not the start. Yeah, no, that, well, I don't think death is not a bad thing. No, no. I mean, my mom used to get on right? that case when I was doing that. Says you go black is such a dark color, which is good, but it's also a combination of every color in the rainbow. I mean, you know, you got you got. It depends on how you spin it. Black is not a bad thing. Darkness is not a bad thing. Being by yourself in the quiet is not a bad thing. I love it when it's just dead quiet, and I'm just like working on this little fig leaf and dipping it. And it's like it's just—it's the only thing I do feel I have control over. I mean, that's a great feeling. I mean, you know, you step outside the door, that game's over. Does it make more sense than I can do? On my own, I mean, again, I, I almost see them as collaboration. I mean, all art's collaboration, whether I'm going to an earlier source in art, or I just see something that I like, that all of a sudden I think, hmm, how can I make it better? Or how can I make it more specific? Maybe it's not that conscious. Maybe it's just you. No, no, there's no, no. The, and the, like, the titles and everything, everything comes after. I mean, I have no idea what... I had no idea this would be title we have always known fear until I sat looking at that shark's tooth for a day or two, painting it. And all of a sudden you realize, Jesus, 10 million years ago we we're under the same problem here. I can't go outside without worrying about something. Um, or I'll see something, this is in room 547 of uh, the Met. It's, a, it's Starbucks, but um, it's an early 15th century Italian mermaid or the siren. So this is called Sea of Desire, because I wanted to look like Captain Nemo, got you in Nemo's submarine, and all of a sudden you went, hmm, what's that? Um, this is called Conundrum, it's the rabbit uh, uh, duck, thanks, I couldn't see the duck. The rabbit duck uh, conundrum. Uh, this one is called uh, Badgers Don't Give It a Shit. Uh, this was done for Bannon. I mean, basically it's the idea of just tearing everything up, and so there's that, anyway, it's... Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I look. And this one, the little shell up there is called First Poem. It's based on, uh, it's, a, it's a painting of a uh, seashell, 500,000, 500,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah, think of it. It was the oldest, uh, 
Do, do you know? I mean, basically, it's the oldest known marking of, by man on an object that was not just the marks weren't just as a result of skinning the animal or, or stripping meat away. It was an actual conscious mark making. And I did that, so I call it first poem because it's just like this beautiful little thing. Um, and then the one above that is uh, the Venus of Willendorf, which is uh, 32,000 BC, which she's like, that's the first picture you see when you're in art history, if you take art history. So Donald Carroll said that your work is, um, your, your early work was essays, were essays in form. Okay. And, uh, let's see, can you elaborate on that? Because then you go on to, and then he says, you go on to create meaning and to deify the the um, the object. So that's what you're doing, really. I mean, Still, you're just, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all, I mean, it just it's, it's just that now it's signifier. Now it's and it, it it engages the viewer in the sense that whatever they bring to it, even if if even if the title is somewhat opaque, even to some of us, maybe we can't always decipher it but you're still engaging the viewer. There are no shadows, right? Yeah, no, no that, that's, that's yeah. no, they're not painted as if, I mean, they're painted as if they're an idea, so there's not a shadow. I've also, one of the things that's interesting me about the newest pieces are the, the, I found a source for convex glass, which I saw. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask you that. Yeah, well, but, but what I'm trying to do, yeah, the glass is actually bent out, mm -hmm. and so then I try to paint the uh, background so it's concave, so, which gives it, and then by thickening the frame also, then it gives an inference uh, just intuitively that there's a real space in there for that object to be kind of wrapped like it's in a curiosity cabinet. And so those kind of, because if I, and, I'll, and if you paint, if, you, if I paint shadows in it, there's a specific kind of light coming on it, and, there, and you know that the light's coming from that direction. If I paint no shadows in it, just, you can kind of walk around it and it's just, it stays the same. It's not like it's anyway. The original idea was like I never painted shadows because it wasn't a real thing. 